بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي طلبة المرحلة الخامسة Our subject is about the proteinuria and nephrotic syndrome and this is a picture for a child with a nephrotic syndrome this subject consisting from two parts this is the part one and at the beginning few words as an introduction nephron Nephron is the functional unit of the kidney and each kidney containing about 1 million nephron but this number ranging from 200,000 to 2 million nephrons per kidney and this variation in the number of the nephrons in the kidney play an important role later on in the development of the hypertension and progressive renal dysfunction Formation of nephrons is complete at four of 36 to 40 weeks of the gestation, but the functional maturation with the tubular growth and elongation continues during the first decade of life. And because new nephrons cannot be formed after birth, so any disease that resulting in a progressive loss of the nephrons can lead to renal insufficiency later on this is slide showing a simple diagram of a kidney nephron this is the nephron and consisting from glomerulus proximal convoluted tubule lobe of Henle distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct this is the nephron this is the glomerulus in the zone the glomerulus look like this and it is consisting from afferent arteriole, efferent arteriole, and this is the Bowman capsule. This is the capsule, Bowman capsule, then the Bowman space, or what is called the urinary space, where the urine is collected. So the urine is collected in this space, which is called the Bowman space or the urinary space, and this is the most important part of the glomerulus which is called the glomerular capillary wall glomerular capillary wall which consisting from several layers this is the outer layer consisting from the epithelial cell foot process and this is the mesangial cell these are the mesangial cells and this is the mesangial matrix so this is a simple diagram of a kidney nephron and this is the glomerulus normal physiology the chart and the size selective properties of the glomerular capillary wall prevent significant amount of albumin globulin and other large plasma proteins from entering the urinary space but the smaller proteins i.e. the low molecular weight proteins will cross the capillary wall and entering the urinary space but these proteins will reabsorb by the proximal convoluted tubules a very small amount of the protein that normally appears in the urine is the result of normal tubular secretion the normally excreted protein mostly consisting of Euromodulin and protective glycoprotein. Pathophysiology of proteinuria. The abnormal amount of the protein that appear in the urine may result from three possible mechanisms. Number one, glomerular proteinuria. Number two, tubular proteinuria. And number three, an increased production of the plasma proteins. So, the first mechanism, glomerular proteinuria, which is resulting from a disruption in the glomerular capillary wall. The second mechanism is the tubular proteinuria. A tubular injury or dysfunction lead to ineffective reabsorption of the low molecular weight proteins. And the third mechanism is increased production of the plasma proteins, as in multiple myeloma, rhabdomyolysis, or hemolysis. 
normal urinary protein excretion is about 100 or less 100 milligram or less per square meter per day or generally equal to or less than 150 milligram per day more specifically normal protein excretion in children is equal or less than 4 milligram per square meter per hour while the abnormal protein urea is the excretion of more than 4 to 40 milligram per square meter per hour and the nephrotic range of protein urea this is the nephrotic range of protein urea is defined as more than 40 milligram per square meter per hour so excretion of more than 40 milligram per square meter per hour it is considered a nephrotic range of protein urea normal total serum protein is 6 to 8 gram per deciliter the serum albumin is 3.5 to 5.5 gram per deciliter and the serum globulin is 1.5 to 2.5 gram per deciliter and the normal albumin to the globulin ratio is 2 to 1 measurement of the urine proteins there are three methods for the detection of the protein in the urine first one is urine dipstick urine dipstick measurement of a protein the second is the timed 24-hour urine collection and the third one is the urine protein to the creatinine ratio so the first one is the urine dipstick measurement of the protein is primary detect the albumin in the urine and it is less sensitive for the detection of the other types of the protein and the dipstick is reported as negative trace one plus two plus three plus and four plus which is more than 1000 milligram per deciliter the second method is the time it 24 hour urine collection it is more precise than the first one but it is but it is more costly and time consuming the third method for detection of the protein in the urine is the urine protein to the creatinine ratio which is largely replaced the time it urine collection it is calculated by dividing the urine protein concentration in milligram per deciliter by the urine creatinine concentration also in milligram per deciliter to provide a simple measure it should be ideally performed on the first morning voided urine sample to eliminate the possibility of the orthostatic protein urea and a ratio of less than 0.5 in a children less than two years of age and less than 0.2 in children more than two years of age suggest a normal urinary protein excretion while a ratio of greater than two suggests a nephrotic range protein urea so the most important method for the detection of the urinary protein is the urine protein to the creatinine ratio and a ratio greater than two suggests a nephrotic range protein urea what about the types of protein urea or causes of protein urea number one is the transient protein urea transient protein urea it occur in special situations like in fever exercise dehydration cold exposure congestive heart failure seizure and stress usually it does not exceed one or two plus on the bestic and no evaluation or therapy is required for children with this benign condition so the transient proteinuria is a benign condition and it does not require evaluation or therapy the second type of the protein urea is the what is called orthostatic or postural protein urea it is the most common type of the persistent protein urea persistent persistent not transient this is a persistent protein urea 
so the orthostatic proteinuria is the most common cause of persistent proteinuria in school age children and adolescent and children with this condition are usually asymptomatic and discovered accidentally by routine urinalysis and the patients excrete normal or minimally increased amount of the protein in this in supine position and in upright position the urinary protein excretion may be increased tenfold up to 1000 mg per 24 hour in this type of the protein urea, there is no hematuria no hypertension no hypoalbuminemia no edema and no renal dysfunction so the patient or the child with the orthostatic proteinuria usually asymptomatic discovered accidentally and there is no hematuria no hypertension no hypoalbuminemia no edema and no renal dysfunction the other type of the proteinuria which is the most important one is the fixed proteinuria fixed proteinuria it is defined as a first morning urine sample that is equal or more than one plus on the basic test with a urine specific gravity of more than 1.015 on three separated occasions or with a protein to the creatinine ratio of more than or equal to 0.2 fixed proteinuria indicate a potential kidney disease and it is either caused by glomerular disease or tubular disorders glomerular disease it resulting from alteration in the permeability of any of the layers of the glomerular capillary wall to anormally filter the proteins and occurs in a variety of renal diseases such as in nephrotic syndrome the other type is the tubular disease here the protein urea is less than one gram per day like in cystinosis Wilson disease galactosemia heavy metal intoxication acute tubular necrosis and reflex nephropathy now nephrotic syndrome our subject nephrotic syndrome it is primarily a pediatric disorder pediatric disorder and it is about 15 times more common in children than in adult so it is primarily pediatric disorder nephrotic syndrome is primarily pediatric disorder it affects about one to three per 100,000 children less than 16 years of age and the nephrotic syndrome characterized by heavy protein urea, hypoalbuminemia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. So these are the four components of the nephrotic syndrome. Heavy protein urea, i.e. a nephrotic range of protein urea, excretion of more than 40 mg per square meter per hour. Hypoalbuminemia, the serum albumin is less than 2.5 gram per deciliter. Edema and hyperlipidemia, mainly the cholesterol, which is more than 200 milligram per deciliter. Causes or etiology of the nephrotic syndrome can be classified into two groups. The first one, 90% of the children having what is called idiopathic nephrotic syndrome idiopathic nephrotic syndrome consisting about 90 percent of the nephrotic syndrome and the second one is the secondary nephrotic syndrome i.e there is an underlying cause for the nephrotic syndrome which consisting about 10 percent of the etiology of the nephrotic syndrome so the first group which is called idiopathic nephrotic syndrome which is about 90 percent of the causes and the types of the idiopathic nephrotic syndrome and including the minimal change disease which consisting about 85 percent focal segmental glomerulosclerosis about 10 percent and the mesangial proliferation about five percent 
This is the idiopathic nephrotic syndrome. The second group is the secondary nephrotic syndrome, i.e. there is an underlying cause which consisting for about 10% of the causes of the nephrotic syndrome. The underlying cause may be uh, SLE or Hinochshoyen Barbara, malignancy like in lymphoma, leukemia, and infectious diseases like hepatitis, HIV, and malaria, and other causes. Pathophysiology. In many change disease, the glomeruli appear normal or show minimal increase in the mesangial cells and matrix. While in electron microscope, there is effacement of the epithelial cell photoprocess. The underlying abnormality in nephrotic syndrome is an increase in the permeability of the glomerular capillary wall, which lead to massive proteinuria, then hypoalbuminemia. Massive proteinuria and hypoalbuminemia result in decreased plasma on cortic pressure. So there is a decrease in the plasma on cortic pressure in the intravascular space. And this will lead to shifting of the fluid from the intravascular space to the interstitial space with the formation of edema. Edema will appear when the serum albumin is less than 2.5 gram per deciliter. This will lead to decrease in the intravascular volume. There is decrease in the intravascular volume. And this will lead to an increased reabsorption of the salt and water by the kidney through the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, and antidiuretic hormone secretion respectively. And this will lead to more edema formation. Hyperlipidemia. Serum lipids, mainly the cholesterol, also triglyceride, low density lipoprotein, very low density lipoprotein, all of these will be elevated due to two reasons. Number one, hypoalbuminemia stimulates generalized hepatic production of the hepatic protein synthesis, including the synthesis of the lipoproteins. Number two, lipid catabolism is diminished as a result of the reduced plasma level of the lipoprotein lipase related to the increased urinary loss of this enzyme. Thank you for listening.